The big one organized by Extinction Rebellion is the group's first demonstration since it said that it is moving away from disruptive protests and instead going to focus on attendance. It comes after Just Stop Oil delayed the start of, Grand National, of the Grand National and threw paint on a snooker table at the World Championships last weekend. Well, joining me now is former XR spokesperson and associate professor of philosophy, Rupert Reed. He now runs the Climate Majority Project. Uh, good to see you um, this afternoon, Rupert. Um, these four days of protest, what do you think they're achieving? Well, I was out there on the streets yesterday in London, and I must say the atmosphere was very good natured. Anyone in the London area who wants to find out more, you might want to come down this weekend. There's a lot of ordinary folk out there. So I think what XR are managing to achieve, at least so far with the big one, is to give people the sense that actually they are serious about no longer disrupting ordinary people. They're going to carry on disrupting power, as I understand it but no longer disrupting the ordinary activities of Londoners, others, etc. I think that's a positive step in the right direction, a more yeah, moderate, I was, I was just going to ask. I was just going to ask about that. Why is the inflection point now? Well, I guess you'd have to ask them to be sure of the answer to that question. But as I see it, it's high time that we find ways of involving a much larger percentage of the population in the absolutely necessary steps to transition that we have to undergo. And I think XR have kind of got that point. The level of concern, the very high level of concern that there now is out there among ordinary people about this emergency, this is not confined to activists. This is not confined to radicals. And what we're trying to offer in the Climate Majority Project is an even wider access to the public. We've got people who are lawyers, people who are in the insurance business, people who are growing food locally, all sorts of people who are not activists, but who understand that in the absence, the terrible absence of sufficient leadership from governments, it's up to all of us to step up to really play our part in getting serious on that crisis. The knowledge of how bad the crisis is, is no longer confined to a small minority. I mean, you can see the number of people who've turned out. I was walking back from work myself through some of the protests yesterday. And you're right, it, is, is a, it, it appears to be a wide uh, socio-economic group who are turning out. Um, were the tactics initially deployed, uh, many of them very disruptive, w were they necessary? So if we go back to 2019, I was proud to have been part of Extinction Rebellion back in those days. I helped launch XR and XR achieved something extraordinary then. It forced a national conversation through disrupting the public and it permanently raised levels of awareness about the crisis. That's absolutely clear from opinion polls. Now dial forward a few years and I think what a lot of people want is to be shown how to take action that is actually effective in starting to change things on the ground, more positive action. That, as I say, is what we're trying to offer in the Climate Majority Project. For example, community climate action, people coming together in their local communities, all sorts of people, again, not just radicals at all, not activists, all sorts of people, including conservative-minded people, and getting out there and starting to actually prepare for what's coming, building local resilience, because the extent to which we've been let down over these past few years by our governments is such that that kind of preparation is essential. So I think that's the direction of travel, wider and wider participation. More and more people are realizing that more and more people are realizing that we're in serious trouble. And when that kind of mutual recognition occurs, then you get a chance to actually have the majority getting activated and mobilized. Yeah, it's, it's like an interest. It's like watching an, an, an evolution, isn't it, a, of a movement. Um, what do you consider short term success? To look like? I mean, obviously, the longer term is, is to save the planet, but what's the shorter term goal? Well, what we need is for more and more people to get involved. So what I would say to viewers is if in your profession or your business or the town where you live, there is a group 
that is already active, that is actually getting moving on dealing with the climate crisis from the ground up, then join it and get involved. And if there isn't, then think about creating one, because we need this to be happening everywhere. We need insurers, accountants, plumbers, engineers, everybody, citizens, parents. This needs to be happening across the shop, where you work, where you live, where you pray. So think about what you can do and remember that this is going to be the question that we are judged by, by the next generation. Our children, our grandchildren are going to judge us according to whether or not we actually did step up once we knew, as everybody basically does now know, that this is not something that's going away since last summer, for example, with those 40 degrees centigrade temperatures. All right, Rupert Reid, good to talk to you this afternoon. Thank you for your time.